Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brittany and I'm on a mission to hit 2,000 subscribers before the end of February. I would really appreciate your help on that. So please make sure you are subscribing. Um, in today's video, we're actually going to be working on a new customer. I went ahead, received their logo, already got it digitized, and we just definitely need to run a sample. But there are some things that I do before I go ahead and run said sample. So let's go ahead and work that right now. So before I actually go ahead and I run a sample, um, this is not common, but this is a little different. Now, normally what I will do when a customer does ask for a sample, I will typically ask them, what size are you wanting this logo? Now, as you guys do know, a left chest is typically anywhere between 3.5 and four inches. But again, some clients do like it a little bit smaller. Like I had one that wanted it at like 2.5 to be exact. Um, I do have a client that actually sent me the logo I don't know if parentheses is proper word around this, but their specific company name, they were like, just grab a font very similar to what I'm about to show you. So that's kind of what I did in this particular situation. Um, so I actually do have a shirt sample that they did provide me and I'm doing a bad job as I always do because that's just me. So I do have a sample of their old logo. It's not old, What? where am I getting my words from? Anyways, you guys are getting what I'm saying, right? We need to make sure that the logo size is similar. So I do always keep my, um, you guys are gonna know this word because I'm blanking out because I'm talking too much and I'm losing my words. Tape measure. I do keep this on my machine. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to measure the physical logo here and then we're gonna measure the actual company name here. Again, great job at showing Brittany, but I only have two hands, so bear with me. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna flip you guys down to my screen, we're gonna take these measurements, and then take those measurements, apply them to um, said chroma, and then get them up on the machine so we can run that sample. As you guys will notice, this entire logo is only about three and a half inches long, the greenery production is actually only about just shy of two and a half. And then the actual like palm tree and chair is well under two inches, as you can tell. So I went ahead and I threw it up on my, my software here that you guys can see. I did make this actually two, so I just made it a little bit bigger. And then the greenery, I did go with the two and a half. So as you can maybe see it, we're at zero. So I'm gonna just go ahead and highlight this whole thing. I'm gonna drag it over to the one. So if you see the one is gonna come straight down. So about just shy of three and a half. So basically I'm just gonna drag it over. I don't even know if you guys can see all my lines that I'm doing, but I actually do feel that that might be a little bigger than what they have. So, especially like the palm tree area. But again, we don't wanna make it too, too small because the smaller we're gonna make this, the harder it is for us to embroider. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with that. And then from here, I can actually check out my print sample, which looks like we have six colors in total that we will be working. So what I'm gonna do is save this to my desktop as my DST, because Recoma is a DST, and we need to go ahead, put this on our machine. And then also, I am gonna match the colors as close as possible. Um, it should be fairly easy, since we are only just really working with you, as you guys see, green, white, black, and this like gold color. So let's go ahead and get the machine set up for that and then let's run our sample. All right, so right now it is up on my USB. Let's just go ahead, throw it over here. And I will be embroidering with my five by five hoop. So let's go ahead and make that selection now. So as you guys will see, it is all set up on said machine. And now all that we're gonna do, actually the only color, actually, 
Every color is already up on my machine here. So all that I'm gonna do is just go ahead and schedule it in the machine now and um, run that for a sample. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is keep the image up here just so I can see it as a reference. I do also have my laptop with my cheat sheet. So it looks like our first color is going to be white followed by black. Then we have green, which is 14, 14. Then we have the back of the chair, which is back to white outline, which is black. The, okay, the G P is green. Oh, cool. They did the, um, my, did my, when I have it in the system, actually it's going to jump G P. Oh no, I need that a different color. Crap. I need to actually, I need to redo all this guys. See, look at that. So all that I'm gonna do is change this to a different color in my software. Okay, now we have to resave and re-add that image. Okay, so what's going on over here is I am resaving it. Put in my flash drive. Um, greenery production. Woo. Okay. So I'm deleting it from my USB. I already saved the reversion, the correct version on my desktop, and then I just dragged it back into my USB. So let's safely remove. Oh, also, we need to. Pull it up again with our print preview. So we have our cheat sheet in front of us. There we go. I don't know about you guys, but I have to look at the USB hole in order to do that. <laughs> okay. So let's go back up to colors. We are back to white, black, green, white, black, green, and then the gold. I was just gonna use that gold, so my gold, my two. All right, so let's go ahead, let's get our hoop um, loaded up so we can run that sample. I don't, it's only 4,588 stitches, so it is quite small. My only concern, I guess, if you're gonna ask me, is I actually do feel that the GP probably needs to be the smaller weight thread as well as a smaller needle. And now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm just gonna do it. I don't recall if I talked about it, but I did pick up this box from Amazon. If you guys know where I can get the, um, I think this is 60 weight, pretty sure this is 60 weight thread, but with bigger like spindles, please let your girl know. Uh, candle thread is 40 and obviously I like those way better. Um, I'm trying to compare the two greens. They're like somewhat different, but like, will you notice? Like I notice, but will they notice? Let's see. And typically what I do is I actually have been leaving my smaller needles on my machine and I just change out. Yeah, no, those are way too different. Okay, let's, let's ditch that thought. In my mind, I'm thinking maybe instead of the smaller thread, I can use the smaller needle. I don't know. I don't know. Let, let, let's just run a sample. If the sample doesn't look good, then we'll look into plan B. That's what we're gonna do. What I'm gonna do, just in case this does not come out good, I'm actually gonna push the image all the way towards the front. So therefore, if I need to rerun another sample, I'll have that room. 
Okay, perfect. And then also, I just posted a video of me cleaning my machine, so let me make sure. Yep, thread is attached. Um, nine, you're attached. We're also doing black, which you're fine, and gold, you are fine. Because, like, one of my threads are not attached. But I don't need that color, so it's okay. Actually, a couple of them are not attached. Let's just be real. It's all right. All right, so a couple things. I, so a couple things I do want to mention. It is still embroidering the sample, but I did notice that my digitizer actually had the like little basket, the same exact color as the greenery, and this is actually supposed to be gold. So I had to go in my software and change it. Also, I'm trying to understand why when I did the exact measurements on here. Right, you guys seen it, and I reflected it on here, it is coming out way smaller. So I basically just went ahead and enlarged it to my standard four inches. I did make this just a slight larger as well, and then we're gonna have to rerun the sample as soon as this one's done. I actually hate talking when the machine is going because it's just so obnoxiously loud. And I did go ahead and stop it just mid-production because there's absolutely no need to continue embroidering when I already know the outcome. What the heck is going on here? Okay, I'll have to re-thread this. I don't know what just happened, but basically, I'm not liking the size. Obviously, I did notice that the basket is not the right color, so we need to correct that. Um, just noticing things like on my machine. As I'm staring at it, even though I'm not even using that color. It's all right. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, so I just went ahead, I stopped the production just because absolutely no need. I've deleted it from the machine. Let's go ahead. All right. So all that is done. I just need to schedule. There's a squirrel running around in the tree out there, but it is so loud. So one thing I will say is, is it tedious to uh, get a first time logo set up? Sometimes it definitely can be. Other times, honestly, I get it from my digitizer, I throw it on and boom, Bob Drunkle and I'm done. And then there's times like this where I have to, you know, go back and forth, correcting the sizes. I mean, granted, I, I, here's the thing. When I sent the size to my digitizer, I had the shirt in the trunk of my car. I was too lazy to go out, measure it, and then give it to my digitizer correctly. And I knew like if I was off, no big deal. I'll just resize it on my machine. So ideally, would I send the correct sizes to my digitizer? The answer is yes. Um, but it's okay. It's not like that big of a deal. Because again, I do have the software where I can still, you know, adjust things as needed. Um, oh, we need to schedule our sizes. Schedule? We're not scheduling anything, but. Now also too, I did not like the way that the um, GP came out. Again, this was a smaller image. So I did, as you guys know, make it bigger. So I'm just going to see if I can run it still with the same thread size. Oh, you just outlined like you're gonna be massive. Okay. Well, let's use the space. So clearly we have a lot of cleanup to do, but the, the GP is not as bad as I was actually predict, projecting. Let me just do a little cleanup for you guys just because this looks ridiculous. And I don't know why my gold particularly is leaving so many pigtails or tails. I don't know what they call it, but um, 
All righty. So here we go. This was the first one. And as you guys can see, like, where's the initials missing? Totally tiny. Actually, this is off centered. So look at that. And then in here, we went ahead and made the chair bigger. We had the pot match the greenery. So that is now the same. So let's, let's look at this side by side. Here they are side by side. You can, oh, you can't even see it. You can definitely tell that their chair is thicker than my chair. Greenery obviously is a different font altogether. Ah, you know what I just noticed? This is all capitalized. I even showed this to them and was like, can you verify? And they're like, yeah, it looks great. But I just noticed all this is capitalized. So we need to correct that. To be honest, the, the GP looks almost identical. I don't even know if you guys could pick that up. But there they are. So what I'm actually going to do, obviously there's nothing I can do about the thickness of the chair. That's more of a digitizing thing. Um, the sample they showed me did not have this little white little dot. So I must have removed it over time. I definitely want to go ahead and change this to all caps. And I think otherwise it's fine. Obviously this is crooked. Um, I wonder if that is, oh, I think I embroidered it crooked on, on, on my little cheek. Cause look, if I tilt it, it's fine. All right, let's make that correction and let's run another sample. All right. And here is the newest addition. I went ahead and as you guys can tell, I capitalized everything rather than leaving it lowercase. The chair is the exact same. I didn't change anything with that. So here are the chairs side by side. So not too shabby. Like I said, these are showing definitely more crisp versus this is looking a little bit more like jagged, but there's nothing I can do about it as well as the GP. They look almost the same. So that's not bad. The only thing is, is that you can tell there is a bit of a gap between the names. I guess I can try to separate it because that is the way it just defaults. And this font is actually through Chroma directly. So that's just kind of them side by side again, as you guys can see. So now at this point, we can go ahead and actually run production on the t-shirts now that we got everything set up and organized. And yeah, let's, um, I believe I have six shirts. So let's go ahead and look at that order. So I did place the order with Sanmar, which is my um, vendor I work with. And we are going to be using the same style t-shirts, which are the actual Nike. And as you guys can see, it's like with the V-neck and a collar. So here's one of the t-shirts. I believe everyone picked out almost different colors. I believe I have a few similarities. Like I have a black, we have a navy, another one, another navy, hot pink, white. Then we did this like gray, followed by green and lilac. So those are all the shirts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. We have 10 shirts to embroider on. So let's go ahead. I am going to be using, as you guys know, my hoop master in order to make sure that it is the perfect size of my left chest. I do have a discount code down below design press. You guys will find that. So if you want, definitely check that out. It's free shipping. So I definitely do appreciate you guys using my link and yeah, let's go ahead and get this order start it so we can finish it and get it delivered. All right guys, and just like that, oh, you can't even see it. All my shirts are done. I'll actually go ahead and show you one of them on the t-shirt. So here you go. I'm trying to see if it's focused. Yeah, so here you go. If you actually notice, the legs did kind of thicken up on the t-shirt, 
which is great and everything came out wonderful and so yeah i'm really happy with the overall outcome so basically the moral of the story is you got to put a little bit of time into the very beginning before you can just slap it on your t-shirt or your product just because you want to make sure that everything is accurate as you did see with me i had to change the pot color i had to correct the um not necessarily the font but i had to go to all caps versus lower caps so you just definitely need to just kind of do your due diligence kind of go back and forth with it run a couple samples making sure that the colors match up like everything i did show you guys once before i do have a big binder of like a printout of all my images and then i typically will code each of them because at the top of all your threads will be a physical number and then therefore if that customer comes back to you you know exactly what color coordinates with their logo so everything will just stay the same so yeah hopefully you guys did like that video if you could please remember to like share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next crafting project bye everyone mm -hmm.